What's up, challengers? Welcome to the gym. My name is Gym Leader Geo, and this is week six of the locker room. The San Francisco Giant Ace are team building for the Bronx Bear Ticks and their coach, Joey Poke Aim. I'm a huge Poke Aim fan. I have been for a long time, so I'm super stoked that he's uh, that he's joined the league this season and that I actually get to play him because um, there have been times when other Poketubers that I was a fan of have joined the league and I never got to play him, like Hayden, for example. Uh, so really looking forward to this game. Uh, his team is very hard to build for and I'm a little nervous. I'm also excited because I really want to play him. So I'm nerve sided here, but uh, I'm a little nervous team building for him because he can really go a lot of directions with his team. So I had to kind of look back at his, um, his previous battles and uh, shout out to Jolt who gave me um, a few tips as well. And um, so this is what I came up with. Uh, we are going to run a Home Yowner Mew, a Mega Scizor, a Blacephalon, Shaman, uh, Tefiti, Haxorus, Toys R Us, and Remix, uh, the Ditto today against his possible draft of Zygarde, Mega Gyarados, Necrozma, Magnazone, Heracross, Excelgore, Licky Licky, Whimsicott, Salazzle, Lanoon, and Rhydon. So, add lots of <laughs> like you guys know how i do i usually like to kind of tier them based on the likelihood i think they come i think zygarde and gyarados setting up are his win cons i know in a lot of his previous games he's played um with a lot of hazard stacking and then setting up uh, which is obviously an amazing strat zygarde and gyarados are both pretty scary um Dragon Dance, obviously, a, a big threat. Zygarde can be really bulky, and I don't have, like, an ice type or a fairy type that just immediately threatens him, um, because, obviously, I would not be able to take on that bulky boy with a Rabombi. So, uh, looking into that, I had to really think of ways around dealing with those two, and so that was a big part of my strategy here, was to really... Guarantee that I have ways to check uh, Zygarde, Gyarados, and Heracross getting to plus one speed, and then making sure that nothing on my team uh, really gives them too much of an opportunity to set up on me. So I tried to make sure I have as few weaknesses for those two as possible, and then I know that I need to be careful around Necrozma, because um, Necrozma is also a beast that's kind of bulky, so you can't just like take it out right away and could potentially set up against me as well. Um, rock Polish, a, a, a scary prospect as well. Um, so I have those three as like the top three. Zygarde and Gyarados are like in a tier of their own. The next tier are things that are threatening, uh, could be win cons, and that being Necrozma, also a setup mon. Um, Magnazone, which I don't switch into amazingly. I do have options for it, but I need to know what set it is first. Uh, so I had to bring a lot of things that can handle Magnazone as well. Uh, and then Heracross, uh, Scarf Moxie is a threat. Scarf Guts could potentially be a threat. Just a threat in general. <laughs> Heracross is, is pretty beastly. But there's no guarantee that he brings Heracross because Toxapex is a really good switch into it. Um, and so is Mega Scizor. So, so there's that. Excel Gore, I have very high up on the likelihood list. He's number six um, on the third tier, just because I did the tiers a little differently this time. Uh, because it's his Spiker, he's really fast, the fastest Pokemon in this matchup. And he matches up pretty well against common leads on my team, like Mew. Uh, and he can pack Hidden Power Fire to uh, Oko Scizor. Excelgore is also one of those things where you kind of need to figure out what he's packing. Uh, I think if he's going to opt to bring it, he's going to bring it lead style and he's going to bring it with a focus sash, but you never know. It could be specs and that could be a problem too. I think he's going to want a few defensive checks, so that's kind of where Whimsicott and Licky Licky come in. Um, Licky Licky and Rhydon in this circumstance are a little bit interchangeable as for which um, tank he brings. Rhydon is interesting because it's four times weak to water, but its Earthquake is really strong against Toxapex. Obviously, Rhydon can run a dual dance situation, but then that just baits in Ditto coming in and counter 
just taking him out like pretty out pretty much outright so i don't think he wants to do that if he does bring it he would bring it tank not offensive maybe as an answer to say haxorus but i think licky licky overall would be better for that because he can sort of cleric around a little bit maybe spread some status with body slams uh, it has decent coverage uh, wish passing stuff like that. I think is probably superior if he's gonna opt to bring it for a defensive set Whimsicott obviously it's a it's a dragon check if he wants to bring a fairy It can be very annoying with leech seeds and stuff like that uh, Shaman is my primary answer to it if he is gonna be trying to do any shenanigans like that because I don't really care if he T waves me uh, This is his defogger, so I need to be on the lookout for that and uh, I think Shaman in general can kind of take him on and actually Haxorus isn't too scared as long as Haxorus is in first. So there's options there. Um, and I'll get into that in a little bit. Salazzle is here. Salazzle is fast. Salazzle is pretty strong. The typing is not bad against my team, but I, for some reason, just don't think, like this could in theory be interchangeable with uh, the position that Heracross is in. Like either of them are decent offensive options for him. I don't think Salazzle comes this week. Uh, Fire typing is not fantastic against my team. Obviously, it's good against Scizor, but Salazzle is pretty flimsy defensively, and um, I'm just not super sure that it that it makes an appearance this week. But it is decent against my team, if I'm being honest. Um, the team that I chose to bring, uh, it is decent against that. If Lanoon comes, Lanoon obviously another setup option. Uh, kind of a risky all your eggs in one basket setup option, but doesn't... Th the reason I don't think it's likely is because he knows I have Ditto, and he can't do... He can't be in a positive enough situation that he can set up with Lanoon and get behind a sub, and if he doesn't, then Lanoon can just come in as a plus six Lanoon and e-speed the rest of his team, and I just don't see him d putting that risk on the table. Uh, and then Rhydon, like I said before, uh, it's not that it couldn't come. None of these Pokemon couldn't come. They all could have a place and could do well against various members of my team, which is why he was very hard to team build for. And just as easily as something could be on the bottom row, they could move up several rows if something else on the upper row moves. To, you know, like, if he's bringing um, Heracross, it's not very likely he also brings Excel Gore just because a lot of the shared weaknesses but he could bring both. Um, if he doesn't bring Heracross because he's bringing Excelgore, then he might bring Salazzle in lieu of Heracross. So you see here, there's options uh, for him to bring, and that was kind of what was hard to team build against. But let's go through my team a little bit. We'll start off with Head Go Boom. Head Go Boom is uh, a Choice Scarf Blacephalon set. Uh, enough speed to outspeed Jolly Max Speed Lanoon, as well as Max Neutral Speed Whimsicott. Uh, then he's scarfed to make sure I'm faster than everything else that's not scarfed. Um, it's a possible lead option for me versus Excelgore, um, but it's a risky one for me. Excelgore learns Water Shuriken, um, which is worth noting, but I have uh, a little bit of HP investment and can actually survive five hits, even if it's max special attack. But and that's with his what I consider to be most likely item, which is a focus sash. However, if he pops a life orb on it, I can only survive four. And if he pops a specs on it, I can only survive three. So uh, I know with multi-hit moves, Joey in general is very unlucky. So he probably won't get five hits, but you never know. Um, it's it, it could be bad if he's focus sash, water shuriken, pursuit, because if I go for a hit against him trying to take him out in one hit and he pops off a water shuriken he might force the switch and then I get pursued but again this is just a very unlikely situation uh, because I don't imagine he would build an excel gore thinking I'm going to lead Blacephalon against it and it obviously isn't a switch into Blacephalon so I really just don't think it's a, a super likely option for him but I just need to assess these risks so Flamethrower handles everything this week. Defire, Shadow Ball handles pretty much everything else. HP Ice is for Zygarde, and Will-O-Wisp is to predict the uh, Gyara dose. Because um, while Shadow Ball is good against the Gyara before it Mega Evolves, after it Mega Evolves, obviously it resists my dual stab um, and is kind of a big problem. So, moving on. 
Uh, we have the Mega Scizor. Mega Scizor is running a Bullet Punch U-Turn Super Power Hidden Power Electric Tech. Uh, now, obviously, the reason for this is if I'm just uh, Bullet Punch U-Turn, he resists me in regular Gyarados form and can possibly set up there. So I want to force him into Mega Form with HP Electric. Um, really threaten that so that he takes on that typing because that way he can't wall me with the U-Turn. Uh, I'm thinking the most likely setup options for Gyarados is probably uh, sub DD. Obviously because Remix. Um, and I think Dark is pretty decent against my team, uh, especially this week. So I think there's a good chance he runs Crunch. Uh, water is a, like, Waterfall is a good stab or, or, I mean, just water typing in general is a good stab. And I only really resist it in two other places, and Shaman doesn't tank um, Crunch all that well. But I still think there's a chance that he doesn't run Dual Stab, and he actually runs something like I don't know. <laughs> I really, I'm really not sure what else he might run. But he could run EQ, he could run Ice Fang, um, but I don't think he really needs to do that. So maybe Stab is is good for him. He could also run Taunt on it, um, but. I really feel like he's probably going to run a sub DD set on that. But Scizor is a. An, oh my goodness, I need to nickname this bad boy. I almost didn't name him Proto. Um, I really think that Proto can do a lot of work here, but I need to be very careful and assess what he's bringing because, as I mentioned before, um, Magnezone. <laughs> Magnezone's a big risk. And, I, I, you know, honestly, I was really on the fence about Scizor this week. He obviously, having the Magnezone, and Joey and Chimp are bros, and Chimp used to have the Magnezone. And so I'm pretty sure Joey had something to do with the uh, eject button into Magnezone tech that uh, Chimp brought against me that week. So if I see that, I'm going to be fearing that combo a little bit. Um, Scizor is a good defensive switch in for me into Heracross. It's a good switch in for me. It's a good check for Whimsicott. Obviously, Whimsicott can pack uh, HP Fire. Um, kind of same situation with Excelgore. Uh, if it's like Focus Sash and I break the Sash and then manage to get in with Scizor, that's great. But if I don't, I need to be careful because he can also Oko me with HP Fire. Uh, need to be I need to be very careful about fire just being packed on things because Scizor is such a good answer for Heracross. So if he does bring the Heracross, I need to predict that there's fire tech tacked onto a lot of things around Heracross, and then I need to sit on Proto accordingly. If he doesn't bring Heracross, then obviously I'm still going to be looking into uh, some of his trap mechanics that he's going to have for me. Uh, unfortunately, a modest scarfed Magnezone does uh, Oko me with HP Fire with the investment that I have this time, but I have enough EVs in speed to outspeed Timid Max non-Scarf and uh, can possibly take it out with a superpower or U-turn out of there. So we kind of need to see which way he chooses to go with that. I don't think he's going to bring Scarf because I have Doug Trio, and so if he took out Proto, then I would and he's locked into a move with Scarf, then I can come in with Doug Trio, and then he's he's kind of borked because I got him I got him trapped and I can take him out. So I'm predicting it's more likely that he's either Specs, um, Shed Shell, Shaka, or Air Balloon, Magnet Rise, something like that, I think is probably more likely. He could also run Assault Vest. Uh, so those are my thoughts there. And I think that's good enough to uh, kind of discuss what Scizor is doing this week. Moving on to Tefiti the Shaman. Uh, leftovers with Seed Flare, HPI, Psychic, and Synthesis. Uh, enough speed packed on it to outspeed Heracross. Um, and then a lot of it put into a little bit of bulk and a little bit of special attack. With a special attack investment, I can two hit KO Zygarde. And. Um, Sorry, I can two hit KO the yeah, I can two hit KO Zygarde and I can two hit KO the Gyarados. So I'm a decent switch into them because I got a pretty good amount of bulk. This is my primary Zygarde answer. 
uh, and my sol my most solid switch into it. It's also probably going to be my switch in if he ever brings in Licky Licky or one of his other walls in a good way. I've really loved Shaman ever since she joined the team. Um, bulky Lefties is going to be really solid for me, I think. Um, HP Ice obviously is for the Zygarde almost exclusively, but it, it will also hit the, um, the Whimsicott. And uh, it switches in not only to Licky Licky, but also to Rhydon. So basically any of his walls I'm a good switch into. Rhydon's Double Dance set, like I kind of mentioned before, I don't think it's likely to come, but it could potentially break me. Uh, but I really don't think it's likely that he would be able to get one of those off and break me before he just dies outright to a Seed Flare. So I don't see that happening. Tafiti's main job, obviously just eating Thousand Arrows, uh, breaking subs for any of his possible setup mon and trying to stay healthy and uh, living to see another day kind of in general. The Psychic is there for the Heracross, of course, and uh, also helps against the Salazzle. Salazzle does outspeed me, so it's less useful in that regard, uh, but it could be super helpful for me against the Heracross. Um, you need to be looking out for Thousand Waves switch-ins. You could Thousand Waves with a Zygarde and then pop into an answer to Tafiti or something like that. And obviously in this circumstance, Thousand Arrows, or sorry, Thousand Waves into Salazzle would actually not be great for me. But I do have Blacephalon who can switch into Salazzle's stab. Um, and so, and then kind of threaten it out. Uh, it can take a hit from either of its stab moves. So. Uh, moving on to Ditto. Ditto's HP this week is Ground, because I think Magnezone is the most likely Pokemon to bring Hidden Power. Um, and Ditto becomes a decent switch into Magnezone, kind of depending on the situation of it a little bit. Obviously, I resist his dual stab. He's likely to pack Hidden Power Fire for Proto. A Specs Hidden Power Fire doesn't guarantee uh, to take out Ditto. I can survive a Specs Hidden Fire, and then I can threaten the Oko, unless he's really bulky, I can threaten the Oko back with the HP ground. So that sort of gives me the opportunity to really scout it well. Of course, as I mentioned before, Remix is a huge, important answer to Lanoon. So if I see Lanoon, I need to keep him healthy, and I need to be really careful with that Magnezone, because I don't want to switch in, find out it's Assault Vest, have to take two uh, HP fires or something like that. I need to be really careful in that regard, but it is a good check if I can get some chip on the Magnezone to definitely uh, try and finish it off. Obviously, we won't trap each other if he's a trap set, but still there uh, as an opportunity. And like I said before, most likely hidden power situation. Um, I really felt the need for Ditto this week because he does have just so many setup options. And I think it would be foolish of me to not bring him. And then, uh, in order to give Ditto the opportunity to be that effective check to set up that I needed, that's why I have so many ways of not allowing Pokemon to set up subs against me and try and take away, uh, the g basically take away the game um, after they're behind a sub. Moving on, we have Toys R Us, the Haxorus, uh, running Dragonium Z. Uh, where are my notes on this thing? Uh, yeah, not the most original set, um, but he's definitely been a godsend for me offensively this season. I don't see why he wouldn't be in this match either. Uh, I have enough speed to outspeed Zygarde, uh, a max speed Zygarde. I have Poison Jab, which Oko's Whimsicott, who is his only fairy and uh, essentially his best answer to my Dragon Stab. He also does have um, Magnezone, obviously, but again, Oko'd with earthquake and then i can really just go to the races with outrage at plus one dragonium z outrage uh, that devastating drake is going to do a lot of damage at plus one at oko's licky licky at plus one two eqs will take out rhydon and right if he's a tank set and rhydon cannot take out toys r us with one ice puncher eq and he and the magnezone also important to know can't oko me with a scarf set so i will outspeed with toys r us uh, unless he's scarfed, and if he is scarfed, he can't beat me. So, uh, I'm hoping that Toys R Us does a lot for me this week. 
And we'll move on to the final Mon, which is Home Yowner, the Mew, uh, a Leftovers, bulky, a speedy bulky set with Flamethrower, Dual Status, Thunder Wave, and Toxic, and Stealth Rock. So this set went through quite a few iterations, which is sort of what I want to talk about a bit here. I mentioned that I don't want to let any of the Mons set up subs against me, but I think I'll be okay in that I have T-Wave to throw off against the Gyarados, I have Toxic to throw up against the uh, Necrozma and the Zygarde, I have enough speed to outspeed the Zygarde and the Gyarados prior to them getting to plus one, so I can get the desired status against them prior to them getting a sub up. Flamethrower is to, uh, again, help me deal with Magnezone. I don't want Magnezone to have a free switch in against anything. It might think it's a free switch in against Mew. It is not, obviously. I also kind of needed that because otherwise I can't do anything to the Magnezone. If it, it would resist my stab, which is why Joey might think he can switch in. And I have T-Wave and Toxic and it's immune to both of them. So it would be a really good switch into me if I didn't pack the Flamethrower. Um, I could have packed Earth Power, but Ground's not super good against his team. Flamethrower also is good against the Whimsicott, the Heracross, and the Excelgore. And basically anything that resists the Flamethrower, I'm just going to T-Wave. I did consider, in lieu of T-Wave, Scald here, because that would mean I have an attack that's good against the Zygarde as well. Um, and I guess I'm not 100% sold on not doing that. I might change my mind on this one at the very last second. You know, I might get it as Scald, have it gend as Scald, and then I can always just give it the TM for T-Wave if I really want to. I think T-Wave is a good option because it adds that luck element, which could be uh, useful against a, a caliber player such as Joey, sometimes just one turn going my way, uh, the, the correct timed uh, uh, full para could really turn the tides of the battle. It could be helpful to ensure that Necrozma doesn't rock polish up and outspeed me and sweep me, but also I think I'd rather toxic Necrozma if that's going to be the case. Um, it could be useful against a uh, switch in like Excelgore. I mean, honestly, it just could really annoy his team and stop them from doing what they really want to do. It's just a matter of what's the situation in which I use it, who am I up against, who do I threaten out, and uh, really, I, I really, really need rocks up this week. I need hazards in general. The Whimsicott obviously being his only defogger, I do have Flamethrower for that, and I don't imagine that he would appreciate the Toxic either. So, uh, I do have options there. Running, Trying to spread some status with Mew this week, uh, being bulky enough to take a hit or two here and there, and having a little bit of special attack investment to sort of threaten out some other things too. So that's the team this week. Let me know in the comment section down below what you guys are thinking. I need to get this team gened. Um, because uh, Joey doesn't have a whole lot of time left and uh, we are scheduled to battle like now-ish, but if the if the Jenners aren't gonna be available, then this the battle this week might end up being on Showdown. Uh, so I'll see you guys tomorrow and I guess we'll find out which one of those things uh, will be the case. Definitely leave any comments about what you think about the team this week in the comment section down below. As always, my name is Jim Leader Geo. You guys are the challengers. Thanks for stopping by and I'll see you guys next time.